How about Julius Randle? Uh, great, great article by Fred who interviewed Randall and, and talked about uh, what's changed in his approach because similar situation where whether you're looking at the eye test, watching the games, or you're looking at the stats, you're seeing the guy who is, again, changing his shot diet for the betterment of the team, and he's seeing great results. He's now averaging 15 drives per game compared to nine in the past with the Knicks. Way more attempts and efficiency from inside 10 feet, which is right where you want to see him uh, operating. And the key thing in Fred's article, when he talked to Julius about what's changed, and Julius said while he was on the mend from the ankle surgery, he was in a, he was in a, a hotel room for two weeks. He, he was immobile. And he said he started watching more film and noticed that he was taking bad shots. <laughs> this is it. This is in the article. So what we were saying for the last two wait seasons. Wait a minute. <laughs> he, according to Fred, he eventually noticed a theme. Despite his success, too many shots were needlessly difficult. You notice now, bro, he doesn't take those step back threes like that no more. He does not. Doesn't the spinner Rudy as as our guy uh, Carlo <laughs> illustriously described it uh, is no longer not as much and he's not taking those step backs the long twos they're cutting out the long twos he's cutting out getting getting the the the, the post ups way high up <laughs> by the elbow he's dabbed down the three point line trying to post up making the game easier on himself you gotta like that man because it's it's noticeable it's a noticeable difference in his game absolutely but I'll say this as funny as it is for because that's what we on this channel have been saying about Rand. It's like, dude is just a tank. He can get to any spot in the paint that he wants to. That's all he needs to do. We, we, we it's like, and we've noticed that the jump shot. Yeah. We even talked about last year. It's like every time Brunson took a mid range jumper, you're like, okay, that's pretty confident going. Julius yeah. would make a, take a mid range. It's not like it's wide open. It's like sidestep double team. It's like a lot of these Kobe esque shots. That he's taken a lot of right. Yep. Where it's like, very challenging shots that you should only take shot clock winding and you can hit those. And to his credit this season, when the shot clock has been winding down in difficult situations and I'm thinking of like what, like uh was, I guess against the Timberwolves, right? He is knocking those shots down. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the bulls, man. He's knocking those shots down. And so I got to give him credit there. Uh, but he did mention on Paul George podcast that he said he wanted to be more efficient. Right. And watching film was a big thing to him. And, you could just see it like the way he approaches the game, it's much more simpler and it is efficient. Yep. Because he recognizes, hey, most of these guys in the league can't stop me. And that's what th those are his words, essentially. I'm paraphrasing, yeah. but that's what he's noticed. And when you see it on a night to night basis, this is the Julius Randle where I'm like, this game is transferable. And I, it gives me more confidence that this is more transferable to the playoffs because it, they're not difficult shots. Like, and, and how he's reading the game where he's seeing the double team. Sometimes, yeah, it's a little late, but for the most part this season, he's been on point with making his reads, man. And I can't, I can't, like, you can't knock him for that. He's been playing really well. And this is like, when I look at Brunson and Randall, I'm like, okay, these are the two legit stars. Like Brunson's yeah. efficient. Now Randall's efficient. Right. And, and from going and moving on forward, like the, both their play styles are very physical. This is a team that you don't really want to face because of their physicality. Yeah. Along with their role players, right? Not only do you talk about OG, you talk about Josh Hart, Dante's physical, Grimes could be a physical, McBride, Hartenstein. If Mitch were healthy, he'd be there too. Like, it's this entire team, man, with the way Randall's playing and Brunson, everything's just so complimentary. But sometimes, man, this is where an injury could be good for a player, right? Where you just, instead of like, He's probably a guy that just like cons consistently thinks about the grind, just like going back to the gym, putting the work in, whether it's shooting, putting up shots, whether it's lifting weights, to take a step back and slow down and say, all right, what can I do now to actually improve my game? Hey, yeah, look at more film, man. This is something that it, it's interesting because it's like for a guy who admires Kobe, this is something that Kobe always preached about looking at the film and going and going back to looking at what you can improve. And I hope that it doesn't stop here. That Randall continues to include that in his work ethic moving forward. Absolutely. And and what you're seeing is also, and we have to give him a lot of credit for, is an improvement in leadership. Leadership style. Yeah. 
because he said it on the on that Paul George podcast also about wanting to evolve as a veteran in the game and seeing the game differently and and having the game continue to slow down to make better decisions using the things that he's learned from his trials and tribulations from his success and failure to make him a better player. That's a great job by him. His attitude has changed. He's playing more spirited on both ends of the floor, making great decisions and using film to be better. What what more could you ask for in a player? So I, I think that's a great job by him because he's always he's always coming in into camp in shape, in t- tip top physical condition. He always work puts in that work. Now he's putting in the film work. Could could be seeing a different guy here, man. For sure. And there is one thing I can ask for. Yeah. When you talk to the refs, talk with a smile on your face, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so there it is. But yeah, great, great interview uh, from Fred. Couple other notes from Fred's article. Uh, since no, since November fifteenth, uh, Randall's true shooting percentage has gone up to sixty one percent, and wow. and an effective field goal percentage of fifty six percent. Sixty one percent. Sixty one percent. Holy shooting cow! Sixty. That's efficient. Yeah. Sixty sixty one percent, man. And for people who don't know, that's not only the the, the two pointers, three pointers. That's also your free throw percentage. Yeah, so yeah. like, sixty one percent is usually like Devin Booker esque, essentially. Yeah, when you shoot that high. Greg Gregory Wine, he's he's maturing as a player, absolutely. And the the other thing he he mentioned in here was the increase in the amount of uh, pick and rolls that he was running as the season has progressed. Like once he got into November. They were utilizing him and Mitch in the 4-5 pick and roll to draw the big away from the basket, allowing Julius to get more steam and hit the basket and finish where the big is kind of trailing and trying to catch up. And so that was a great adjustment there by by him and by Tibbs to get him easier shots. And so I, that makes me think, like, obviously, you you, you know, a lot of teams are trying to pull, pull the big away from the basket for sure as, as a basic, you know, element of, of, of an NBA offense, but with the addition of Obi and our guy Chris Percy, Person 9 and had asked Tibbs this question when OG first got there where he said, could you see them playing small with OG at the four, Julius at the five, to typical Tibbs answers, oh, you know, I'll consider it. But hey, is that a possibility with OG's versatility, his size – a potential small ball lineup. Maybe you have, uh, you know, Brunson, Dante. Maybe you have Hart in there because you know he loves Hart. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know he's got he's got to have Hart in there doing something. How many love letters do you think a, he writes Josh Hart on, on a yeah, weekly basis? Yeah, exactly. Which is not a bad thing. I I don't think which is it's not a bad thing. But maybe maybe you, sometimes you maybe you write might run out a lineup of Jalen, Dante, Hart, OG, Julius. And maybe now you're yeah. running. Maybe now you're running. You know, uh, uh, pick and rolls with, with 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 OG, or maybe you're running more pick and rolls. Maybe you're finally running more pick and rolls one five with Jalen and Julius. Oh man, see how that looks. That would be a revelation. Yeah. Uh, I think. I mean, to your point, it wouldn't even be Randall at the five. It'd be OG at the five if they run something. Well, like that. yeah. You know what I mean? But that would be nice. I mean. And, and no one's asking for like long stretches of the game, but if the game permits it, why not just tinker? Because who knows? Maybe that's a that's a lineup you can use in the playoffs. 